Hello, now I'm going to show you how to add a quiz activity. So I'm in my shell, and I want to make sure that I turn editing on. And once editing is turned on, I have uh, quite a few more options, including the ability to add an activity. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the topic that I want to put my quiz in. I'm going to go ahead and add an activity, and it's called a quiz. And that will bring me to the quiz page where I get to customize it. So of course I have to give it a name. And this is going to be called Trivia Quiz. The introduction um, is basically a set of directions that you're going to give to your student. So this is important to put in there. And this could be any anything you want to put in here. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit to the timing area. This is a fairly important place where you can determine how long and when a quiz is available for a student to take. So by default, it's checked to disable that this quiz, would, in theory, would be available uh, the whole time the quiz was available. But I'm going to go ahead and uncheck disable, and you want to make sure that we're going to the open the quiz date and the close the quiz date are different. So let's say I'm going to open it up today I'm going to close it in a couple days from now um, and these are the times that I have so I can it's going to open on the 10th of August, close on the 12th, um, start at 12.30 and then end at 12.30. I can give my quiz a time limit so I need to check enable and let's say I'm going to give my students 30 minutes to take this quiz. Then the next thing I'm going to talk about, there's a time delay between first and second attempt. If there is more than one attempt allowed on a quiz, then I could make them wait a certain amount of time in between their attempts. And depending on how many attempts I allow, there's even time delay further down the line for that. Questions per page. If you have a fairly lengthy quiz, um, 30 to on up questions, um, we recommend about 10 questions per page. So I'm going to change this from unlimited to 10. Shuffle questions. This is going to help you somewhat safeguard against cheating, though nothing is guaranteed, but you can do certain things to um, prevent cheating in your course. Uh, you can shuffle your questions. So it's going to draw from your question bank and shuffle them up, and it's going to be different for every student. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Maybe one more option called shuffle within questions, but it's important to note that if you have multiple choice questions that include options that are all or none of the above, you want to leave this set to no, because then your um, all or none of the aboves aren't going to be relevant anymore to the order of your um, choices. So be aware of that. Attempts. I'm going to leave this set to one. I'm just going to have them take it one time and be done with it. Um, and they won't be allowed to take it again. But um, as I said before, you can allow them on up to 10 attempts if you would like. We're going to talk about adaptive mode in another video. Grading method. And all these grade options are referring to how the grade is displayed to the student, including am I going to apply penalties for wrong answers? And I can set that amount per question depending on how difficult it is. Decimal digits in the grades, uh, am I going to have the quiz results be rounded to uh, simply a round number? Or am I going to have it display on up to three decimals after? I'm going to go ahead and make this um, no decimals. Security. I can choose in browser security to make the quiz pop up in a separate window with um, some provided JavaScript security, which is basically just trying to limit the student's ability to copy and paste. Again, not a complete safeguard, but another good idea to discourage cheating. If I want to require a password, this may be 
a case where a student's ill and they need to take it later and the quiz has been closed, you can reopen the quiz and give them a password and then you know only that student with that password can gain access. Require a network address. This would be if you're doing a proctored exam. Uh, most of your Moodle exams are probably not going to be set up that way, but you do have that ability. You are able to tailor a quiz for a specific group. Um, most of the time, you're probably not going to set up different groups and quizzes and separate them. Um, so, but you can keep that in mind if you think that's something that might be interesting to you to use in your course. And my overall feedback area. So if I want to give them feedback for, let's say, between 75 and 100%, and I want to say, great job, I can set that up right here. If I want to do between 50 and 75 and say, um, please review the material, I can do that as well. So we're kind of down to the end of the main options for the quizzes. There are a few more options we can talk about. One of those is in the review options box, clicking on the show advanced options. And it's important to know you don't want to leave all of this checked usually. You want to tailor this to the student and keep the user in mind so they're not going to want to see feedback at every step. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck most of the stuff in the first column. I'm going to leave scores. We've already given some overall feedback down below. Later while the quiz is open, I don't want anything. Um, and then after the quiz is closed, then I want to go ahead and check that overall feedback that I provided below already at the bottom of the options page. So immediately after the attempt, they're going to get uh, their feedback, which is just their score. While the quiz is open, they're not going to get any feedback. And then after the quiz is closed, they're going to receive all of these. They're going to get their responses that they did, their answers, feedback, general feedback, scores, and their overall feedback again. And that's it. And now I'm going to go down, and I'm going to click on save and return to course.